Hey everybody, this is going to be a quick review on the new mysterious model Sonoma Dusk Alpha, actually more like Sonoma Sky Alpha because that's the smarter one, maximally intelligent and people kind of figured it out. This is from uh, XAI, it's a Grok model and also it seems that XAI has said that uh, if we look here, that they had said that we'll focus on delivering consistent updates to Grok code fast with improvements arriving in days rather than weeks. So this led me to believe, and many others, that these are actually improved versions of Grok code. So I have done some tests, so let's just quickly take a look and see how it looks. So I did it. So these, these models have 2 million context windows. So I tested it with this data set. That's this uh, spaceship Titanic data set. So this whole data set is 460,000 tokens. So I asked a random uh, four IDs from this data set. And I asked uh, the transported status, which is at the very end, like right here, destination, uh, which is like these, and then the age right there. And I asked to say uh, open router chat, by the way, you can chat with it there. And um, it returned this the first time it didn't work and the second time it returned this. So it ignored the destination and age and it uh, answered these, but this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong, and this was right. So Take, make of it what you will. So it's long context, maybe is not the greatest, but it also, but it was, it was very good in some other things. Let me show you. So I kind of did a more difficult version of Dan Max test, which is to ask it to write a technically correct haiku, but the second letter of each word should spell Buddha. Last letter of each word should spell Ashoka. Uh, it says abracadabra, Buddha's admonisha, do chibuk samsara. And if you look, second letters do spell Buddha, and the last letters do spell Ashoka. Ashoka was an interesting historical figure. If you ever look him up, he he also converted to Buddhism at some point, apparently. But uh, and I am also running further tests. One of them is the machine learning scientist test. And actually it does, it does pretty well here. If we actually look here, the latest submission did 81.61%. So it does well, actually. It does it, almost as well as GPT-5. And actually the Brock code already was a very good model here. Unfortunately, uh, it's failing quite a lot of times for some reason. I think there was an issue with my script. I'm fixing that, but this 81.06, Six one is actually just twenty zero point zero 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 two points shy of my best score, which which I got with uh, Rock Code Fest, which placed me in the twenty ninth position out of sixteen hundred. Mm -hmm. So that's Rock Code. So so that's a good sign. And I'm also running this uh, against uh, these against the. Uh, the Spaceship Titanic Challenge. You may have seen my video. If not, check it, check it out, the dynamic in context learning. So here they are. Uh, I got mixed results from it, from them. Uh, we can see here, open router, uh, sky alpha. The progress looks really promising, but when I actually, well, the thing is that it don't seem to be improving. Uh, I think, just a few models showed improvements, such as GLM 4.5 and GPT-5. Uh, I don't know why this happened. So in both uh, here, for example, you don't see it improving, but it shows really impressive accuracy rating here, like 86%. Uh, you know, it's looking at the database over time by looking at bits and pieces of it over time uh, and tries to write this uh, deterministic prediction rules, which we can then use to predict. Uh, here is one case, here is another case. You can see it, it actually, maybe uh, it actually learns in the beginning and maybe then drifts. Uh, I'll have to revisit this. So here is another example. The, the different examples is actually how many uh, training rows we're feeding in at a time. So here it says 50. That means out of the training data, 
it looks at 50 random rows and it tries to uh, write a rule set. Then it looks at another 50, tries to predict them. If it fails, then we feedback where it failed and it rewrites its uh, prediction uh, rule set. That's, that's how it works. In, in here, for example, we are feeding on 100. And in this case, uh, we are feeding 300. So I'm trying different things to see if I can get a, uh, some kind of an idea. But nevertheless, even though here, like it has a 96% rating, when I actually uh, try to truly predict, because I have a prediction script, which you can get from my Patreon, uh, I'll put the link in the description, depending on where you're watching this from, or in the comment. The actual prediction results are not very good. Like see here, we got 68%. So when we have the prediction rules, we uh, run another script, right? Predict from rules to use another model to use that rule to predict uh, four different uh, samples of 50, uh, four different samples of 50 different samples from the data set just to see you know, if, if this would replicate, if the accuracy. Unfortunately, this 96% accuracy did not reflect. Instead, we got 68%. So this is really interesting because if you look at this supposed 96% uh, model's accuracy progress, it's almost, uh, so you can see it's, it's around at 68 on average, maybe. I'm not sure. You know, um, this requires some more digging into. And also, of course, I haven't made a video on this yet, but I am actually working on another example. You can see the performance here. It definitely looks like it increases at first, or maybe it's just a plateau. However, if you look at the percentages, uh, this, this is a custom mathematical data set that relies on complex rules to compute the output from A, B, C, D, and E inputs. Roughly, this is what it looks like. There's certain if-else statements, which is complex, and uh, it is immune to uh, shortcuts. I wanted to see if we can actually learn to solve this. And there is quite a lot of interesting things to talk about this year, which I'll talk about in another video. But I was able to get up to 47% accuracy here, which, which gives me hope. Because in random, like if you are predicting this at random, if you're predicting this data set randomly, there's only four options. Output is either one, two, three, or four. That means you would get 25%. But almost in all runs, we, we went beyond it. And these are considerably long runs. So that means the model is definitely learning something. If you look at this 47%, this was done with JLM 4.5. Actually, JLM 4.5 really surprises me. I would, I would uh, highly recommend you give JLM 4.5 a try and also Kimi K2. Kimi K2 is super fast. The problem with JLM 4.5 is that it does not follow instructions very well. This means Running these tests, it fails a lot because it's not returning, like, look at how many times it failed. I'm just keep running it because it just makes slow progress, but it, it does make progress. If you look at its chart, you know, it does, uh, it does, it doesn't look like it's improving, does it? But it achieves higher average percentages, nevertheless. Like, it kind of gets it right away. And these, it's impossible for it to know this data set. This is completely made up. So it's a whole new problem. That's why they're actually struggling. So I have shown that the models actually can learn and improve, uh, GPT-5 especially. Um, we have shown that, uh, as a matter of fact. Let's take a look here. So, you know, further testing needs to be done. Uh, was it here? Let me see. Uh, maybe right here. Yeah, I've done so many tests that, yeah, this one. You can clearly see the model improving here. And this latest test where it passed 90%, this is GPT-5, on the training actually gave us the 79%. And we actually ran, uh, converted this to a deterministic prediction because 
out of these rule sets, like if you if you look at the rules that generated this, it's like text, but it's very deterministic. So we can actually ask cursor to convert it to a deterministic script as we have done here. So using the script, I predicted the entire test data set and created and uh, submitted the submission and we got about 74%. So that means the model has definitely learned something about it, right? And we can see it in this chart too. But okay, I, I think I digress quite a lot. Uh, from from my uh, from my experience, the Sonoma Alpha is an is a good model. It's like uh, it's an, it's a slight improvement maybe over code, uh, Grok code fast, with a larger context window. Uh, yeah, it's good, uh, especially considering that XAI said they'll be um improving this model almost every few days so maybe we can expect some great things i already use grok code quite a lot i mean that became my default go to model because it's so fast and it's actually pretty good especially with terminal style apps like it's so it's very really, it's all right and very good can be very good with web apps too but especially like if you're just building regular python scripts it's just very good just but it's just it's very good and uh, but sometimes you can make mistakes, um, so you have to kind of catch them. So getting GPT-5 to review it and, you know, of course, glancing at your code is always a good idea. Anyway, so these are my findings. And, of course, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, do check out my Patreon. I'll put the link in the description. I have over 400 LLM-powered applications there you can download, uh, exclusive videos. Uh, weekly meetings with my paid patrons, and also I offer consulting tiers. If you want to, uh, if you want to just talk to me, you need some need some help with something, or you just need some advice, feel free to check that out as well. And take care.